Well, hello, everybody. We are live. That's our favorite way to be uh, here at draft to digital especially when we're doing these live streams. It means that everything worked uh, and you are a part of history. That means uh, you're here at a great time as we are discussing something I think is going to be uh, very interesting to authors, which is the idea of a side hustle, uh, meaning a little bit of side income uh, for authors. But also, if you are not an author, a little bit of side income even if you're not publishing a book at all. So uh, we're going to be looking at some of Draft Digital's tools for doing that sort of thing. But first, uh, let's welcome my uh, my good friend and co-worker, Mark to digital uh, Mark Leslie Lefebvre. Thanks for hopping in, man. It was kind of last minute for you. Oh, it's, it's pretty exciting. Uh, I, I, I wasn't sure <laughs> the, the content, but I'm really thrilled to get to talk about the different opportunities. Because again, we've got some really, really awesome tools that yes. writers may not even know about, or like you said, book lovers in general might uh, might be able to leverage. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, I did a uh, talk at a, at a chamber of commerce um, a while back, before uh, pre COVID, really, but uh, about uh, how to how to use Draft Digital's tools to uh, add some extra income to your business, even if your business has nothing to do with books, uh, because we actually have some some pretty some pretty cool ones. And actually, you're perfect to uh, help talk about this because you're kind of overseeing a lot of what we're doing with the Books to Read platform. Do you want to talk a bit about what Books to Read is sort of evolving into? Yeah, sure. So uh, Books to Read, for anyone who doesn't know, that's the word books, the numeral two, read.com, uh, set up uh, initially uh, primarily uh, as a platform for authors, no matter how <coughs> your books are published. Uh, that you can actually have universal book links to all of the different retailers and, and library websites that are publicly accessible. And it's geo-targeted. So Kevin in the U.S. is going to, if he clicks on a link for Kobo, for example, take them to the Kobo site or Apple or uh, Amazon. Uh, Nook, there is only a U.S. site, so it'll only take you to the U.S. But with Kobo and with Apple and with Google uh, and with Amazon, it would take me to the Canadian site. And it does that geo-targeting. So if you're sharing, for example, if you're in the U.K., you know, normally you'd have a link to the UK version of the sites, but you can basically share it and then somebody in the US will go to the proper American site. So universal book links. But what I love about it is because I have traditionally published books and I publish with other small publishers and right. I have my own self-published stuff and I have titles that weren't published through draft to digital initially and I don't want to lose my reviews. So they're all still up there, however they were. Right. I can have a universal landing page that has all of my links all in one place, all geo-targeted. Uh, customized to include all my own stuff. It's kind of like having an author central page, but it's universal for all the all the retailers. I can have my uh, my social media links, custom carousels, really really cool. But here's where it comes in handy, and this is I think what you're you're getting at is I can put in my affiliate links for the yes. various sites. So my affiliate code for Amazon, my affiliate code for Google, my affiliate code for Apple, my really complex and hard to get affiliate code through Kobo's affiliate program, which is through Lakeshare, which is like, you know, after you smash your head on the desk a couple of times, right. you can finally figure out how to use it. Uh, but basically, <laughs> and, and, and because you can link to any book in the universe. Uh, yeah. And how are non-authors using this platform? In the same way. So, um, because you can know so first let's 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 loop back just a second because every time i bring up affiliate links um somebody inevitably looks at me like i like i have two heads like they don't know what i'm talking about uh so in case you don't know dear listener and or viewer um an affiliate link is re referencing the idea of an affiliate program meaning you are an affiliate with a retailer you sign up for a special account in amazon's case it is an Amazon Associates account. And because you are an affiliate, whenever someone uses your special link, uh, a link that has your special bit of code, and your affiliate code attached to it, uh, you can get a little bit of revenue off of anything they buy. And Amazon in particular uh, is a pretty good one to uh, have an affiliate account with because it, it's not just books. When people uh, click a link that, that is associated with your affiliate ID, and they buy anything. Uh, they buy books, a refrigerator, um, jewelry, whatever they buy. There's a certain percentage that comes off of that and goes to you. So these are good things um, for you to uh, to have access to this sort of thing. Um, now, I think I lost track of what you you had asked me. Uh, you had said uh, is this, this is kind of what we're talking about. It is in part one of the things that I think is very important for the author right. community 
uh, you'd asked me how entrepreneurs were using this uh, and yeah, others. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I always tell people, so like I've had podcasts for years. Um, and uh, one of the things I always tried to do was, you know, I would interview a lot of authors, for example. So let's just say that that's all I did. Let's just say that I was not an author, uh, but I did have this podcast or a blog. Um, you can create these universal book links for the books that are written by your guests, as an example. And so you can have an entire list. We'll just call it a reading list. We'll get to that in a second. But uh, you can have an entire list of these books uh, so that people can uh, buy the book from your from your guests. And then you get a little bit of a kickback of it, off of it. So even though you were not the person who wrote that book, uh, you don't have to be an author to use books to read. Uh, that means that you can profit off of someone else's work in a way. They don't lose a dime. Uh, you get paid by the uh, the company, the, the affiliate company. So you are both helping out the author, helping out the retailer and helping out yourself. That's that rising tides thing that we yeah. love to talk about. And I love, I love the, the idea of, um, you know, um, spreading out my income sources among as many places as possible and you know income income um affiliate income can start off uh, as just pennies but over time over volume uh, as things grow that can actually become a relatively decent uh you know regular uh, income stream yeah. that just kind of adds to an additional channel like I, I'm, I'm all about publishing wide and having your books available everywhere so you can make a little bit of money in a lot of places and affiliate revenue is just another Another uh, padding to yeah. that income, which I think is important. Can we talk about reading lists? Because let's do uh, because yeah. we're the and and we we talked about universal book links, which is where you're associating that affiliate link idea. Right. So, Mark, break down for us how uh, reading lists work. Yeah. So, uh, and this is a comment I saw from Craig, who said uh, he said I, I made a reading list as well to share with readers with my affiliate because Craig's obviously uh, built in his um, uh, affiliate link in there. So, riffing off that, I'll give you an example. I was recently uh, wanting to run a promotion, so I wanted to do a bookbub ad, and I wanted to do a bookbub ad to a series. Yeah. And yes, Amazon has a series uh, link, uh, you know, page which is yeah. easy to use, but that's just Amazon, and, and I want to promote it uh, in as many places as possible. So I went into reading lists. So reading lists, you get in the same dashboard as an author that you get in to create your universal book links, or not as an author, or you just log into books3.com, you'll see universal book links, uh, and then you'll see reading lists. So a reading list is kind of like you are a merchandiser creating a landing page, uh, customized the way you want. What I did is I took my Canadian Werewolf series, and I created the books to read uh, reading list. And what I could do is uh, there's two types of uh, features you could put. You could put a carousel, which has up to five uh, five books available that are on the first page. And then you have to hit a little arrow to see if there's more than five on the mm -hmm. carousel. Like you can have 30, 40, 50, for example, if you're, if you're prolific like Kevin. Uh, but then what I also did is I have a carousel with the books. But then I also do what I call them hero widgets, where if you just put a single book in a carousel, it creates a hero where you've got the, the larger cover and you can put a significant amount of text uh, that'll appear on the right. So my landing page has the carousel of all the books in the series, and then it outlines what each book is about. And so now I have a universal landing page for my series that is inclusive of all retailers. And I could use that landing page in a BookBub ad. I could use it in a Facebook ad, et cetera. And again, because they're all based on my UBLs, that I've got affiliate to, to, to buy. But then that way, when I'm doing my promos, when I'm paying for those ads, I'm paying for those ads to a much broader audience than just a single, you know, very centric US, centric UK kind of thing on Amazon. So that's one of the things I've used reading lists for. Yeah, uh, that and that is kind of, that's exactly the tool that I um, recommend to people whenever I'm telling even outsiders uh, and outsiders by that. I mean, people who aren't authors or authors yet. We'll say they're not authors yet. <clears throat> um, these are, that is a great tool because you can brand it. Uh, you can create your own banners and things uh, to, to brand the look and feel of it. You can name it, whatever you want. You can get a semi custom URL because it'll be books to read.com slash RL slash whatever uh, word you come up with. Uh, so it's got a somewhat unique URL. 
so they're very handy. Uh, I, I, you know, I was building some for uh, as sort of the product rec part of the product recommendation recommendation pages of my uh, website and my podcasts and, and things like that. So, and we're using those tools in house ourselves as part of our uh, marketing, our author marketing promotions. So yeah, so let's, let's, uh, let's talk about that a little. Yeah, and here's the brilliant thing. So just a, a frustrating element that happens is uh, Drafted Digital works really hard with authors to try and work with retailers, like more specifically with Apple a lot, sometimes with Kobo uh, and with Overdrive a lot. Uh, those tend to be the three. We're getting some more with Vivlio. They're, 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 they're connecting with us on those. We're trying yep. to get as many different promotion spots. But one of the challenges is we may get authors submitting, let's say, 100, 300 titles. We submit to the retailer, and then they come back and go, okay, we'll take these 10 or 20. Right, so it's very limited and, and the curation is happening over there. Yeah. Here's the beautiful thing about books to read. It doesn't matter where it's published. It doesn't have to come through draft to digital, right? That's right. Univer it's very universal and inclusive. Right. It doesn't have to be self-published. It can be traditionally published too. So uh, Kara, who is uh, awesome working on promotions with the different retailers, has it was, she was getting frustrated because she had these great titles submitted by authors on themes and went, yeah. Ah, but, but but they're not all getting used. So we created our own landing pages and and we've been paying for ads to, to push them out. So right now in um, uh, April of 2021, as we talk about this, we have bookstoread.com slash RL slash pocket garden. And what it is, is it's, you know, spring, uh, happiness, feel good, uh, I, actually, the first carousel is is really cool book covers that kind of remind us of gardens in spring, right? That, that that's kind of like the criteria. And she picked a bunch of different titles, featured them, and then had all these different themes. And it's all feel good, uh, yeah. feel good, uh, you know, light romance, romantic comedy. You've got some nonfiction, uh, you know, feel good, happy books. And 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 what I love about this is we're featuring some of the D to D authors that we wanted to help spotlight. We're also featuring other titles that are just good books in general. So, uh, and what we're doing is we're pushing this to the audiences where there's an uh, active book bub ad right now mm -hmm. uh, going on from, it was from the 7th of uh, April to the 20th. And we've also purchased some ad space through uh, some uh, podcasts for readers, such as the <clears throat> Best Book Ever podcast. And yeah. so uh, th there's gonna be, there was an ad read in this last uh, episode uh, this week. And there's uh, for the next three weeks, there's gonna be an ad read again trying to drive readers to this page so that right. we can show readers really cool titles and hopefully some of those titles that they pick up are your titles that you've published yep and, not, uh, not you kevin specifically you the, no the hopefully me yeah uh, <laughs> so you know what's great about that is that's something we we're, we're doing but we're using our tools to do that and it's something that could be replicated by anyone it doesn't have to be us that does this. Uh, we are actively out there. We've got more relationships with vendors than you have, ha, ha, ha. But uh, we're also looking for opportunities to help promote um, our stable of authors as well as authors we just love uh, out in the uh, traditional world. Uh, there's no reason you couldn't do the same. So we got some comments. I want to pop a couple of these up because uh, one in particular is coming up. But this this one from I the indie author says, my best day as an Amazon associate was when I shared an affiliate link to Karen. And I think it's Dion. I, I don't know. I may be mispronouncing. But uh, her uh, Marsh King's daughter, which was featured in a big book bub email. And Karen shared my link with her followers, Sweet. which... I think is a great, that's a great way. If you've got an affiliate account and you use all these, several affiliate accounts, you've got Amazon books, uh, Barnes and Noble, Smashwords. Um, if you create a universal book link and you are sharing that, you should tag the, uh, the author for that book and get them hopefully to retweet or repost uh, that link. And so they, because they're going to enjoy the fact that you're promoting their work. So this is a sort of way, you know, if you start doing this and you're helping to promote other authors, they may help to promote you too. And suddenly people are clicking through that link to get that author's book. The author makes money off of it. And so do you. So uh, little, I love little trickles of side income. That's my favorite. Uh, so Craig, Craig Price, Craig A. Price Jr. Uh, on Facebook says, I do formatting for authors on the side, another side hustle you could get involved in. We're not 
directly connected to that. But uh, lots of older people who don't have websites or know-how, uh, I began using books to read to give them an author page and link to their books. Brilliant. So that is a very uh, that's a very cool thing, uh, Craig. Thank you for promoting that. And it is exactly the sort of uh, use that we were thinking when we built uh, books to read and the reading lists and the author pages and that sort of thing. So if you haven't already, you really should go to books to read.com and try out, just sign up. If you already have a draft to digital account, you already have a books to read account. So you can get in there and explore. Uh, there's all kinds of cool tools and we are building more. I promise you. And we're refining what's there. Uh, one of the things that we have an option we have, it's not directly um, something you can use to make to, uh, make extra money, but it could help you with refining things like your ads on Facebook uh, is the ability to add a Facebook pixel. So um, if you don't know what that is, you're probably not using that sort of thing anyway, uh, but it's really easy to Google it. Uh, I'm not going to try to go into it, but it's essentially it's a pixel that loads when people get to a certain website and Facebook can track that load of that pixel to uh, sort of sort of help you measure the efficiency of your advertising. So um, good good thing. Uh, so uh, got more stuff popping up. We'll get to some of these in a moment. Um, other ways, other tools that draft a digital has for um, the whole side hustle idea uh, include things like um, our our refer a friend program, which is. That is our version of an affiliate program. Uh, affiliate stuff was always kind of a challenge for us to offer because, uh, first of all, we don't we don't charge authors for anything. So, if an author comes and signs up, even if you referred them, the most we were able to give you uh, for a long while there was a hearty thank you, uh, which we'll still give you. But if you are interested in making a little extra scratch. Uh, the, we have what we call D2D Refer a Friend. And what this is, is our referral tool. Uh, it's located, if you go to drafttodigital.com, you go to your account, you go to my account, and then you scroll down and you'll see Refer a Friend Program. Uh, and in there, you would set up your URL and you can kind of customize that the same way you can the uh, reading lists. But here's where things get really fun. So once, it, if you start sharing that link, even if you're not a D2D author, you start sharing your refer a friend link. So um, you, you send that out into the universe. And uh, what happens is when someone signs up using your link, when they click on your link and they create an account, when they publish a book and make a sale, you start getting 10% of draft to digital's cut for that sale for two full years. So every time they make a sale over the next two years on that book, or on, on any books, any books that they have published, um, you get 10% of our cut. So nobody loses any money, really. Uh, well, well, digital a little bit. But... Loses, loses a little. <laughs> uh, but we, we're okay with that. And that's a, you rarely find a program like that that, that goes two, two full years. We, when we first started, it was only a year. Right. And we decided, you know what? This is doing pretty good, and uh, it's helping the authors, so we extended it. So you should definitely check that one out. That is... Um, uh, a great way. What I love about that is it's back to that rising tides thing, Mark. If if I refer you and you come on board, then um, I'm going to want to make more money, so I'm going to promote you more. So I'm going to take every book you publish, and I'm going to make a universal book link with my affiliate codes attached, and I'm going to broadcast that far and wide so that I can make as much extra money off of you as possible and it never costs you a thing. That's that's the best way yeah. uh, for things like that to work. So, um, what are your thoughts on that? Do you you uh, do you use that at all? Not enough. Uh, and and I saw Craig left a comment that he's referred all kinds of people. And he keeps forgetting because I mean I'm constantly referring because I, I say hey you can come to Draft to Digital and you can get a um you can get a uh, a, a, a EPUB uh, and a Mobi file converted completely right. for free. You don't even need to use draft to digital to publish. And so I send a lot of people who are frustrated and struggling go, just create a free draft digital account and use this free tool. And then if you wanna use them for distribution, it's there, you decide how to do it. And I keep forgetting <laughs> to say, oh, and here's my affiliate link. So yeah. uh, I think I've done that like 1% you know, of the time. But that being said, again, it's like that, um, 
uh, refer a friend program, it's like this affiliate income that I don't even think about. And it's like, oh, cool. I've made some money off of some people. And that means they've been successful. Yeah. So uh, I keep forgetting uh, to use that myself. I need to kind of embed all my D to D links to anywhere <laughs> with my own affiliate little. <laughs> I, I'm little the thing. same like way. Draftedigital.com slash Mark Leslie or something like it's something easy like that. I think and mine I never is uh, Draftedigital.com slash Wordslinger. Yeah, which is I uh, yeah, associated. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, by the way, uh, there is a post I wrote um, on our blog here. I'll pop that up. Uh, if you go to bit.ly bit slash d2d-side-hustle, uh, that will take you to a blog post we, po we published fairly recently, which outlines uh, some of the, what we're talking about here and will allow you to... I actually have links to other uh, blog posts and things so you can kind of follow along, uh, reference that stuff so that you can you know learn a little bit more about how it works, uh, including how... Universal book links work, reading lists, all this stuff. So there's there's a bunch of links there for you to follow. So uh, check that out. And for those of you in the uh, who attended live here, um, let's just post that there for you to clickety click on. Uh, that should be popping up in your in the comments any second now. So there it goes. Um, so that is and be, be sure to share that stuff by the way with other authors. Don't be greedy. Get out there and help others make money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, um, you know, the whole idea of a side hustle is, uh, in terms of being an author is that we want to, we, you, you hear this a lot. This is advice you hear a lot. Uh, you should diversify your income streams. Now I recognize that everything we're telling you right now is still tied to draft to digital. Um, but there are a lot of ways for you to start making a little extra income on the side as an author, uh, that, and affiliates, uh, is, is one of those. Um, some of the things that we talked about, uh, are things I actually recommend for authors in general, but if you have a blog, for example, or you micro blog, that's a term that's, I think should do for a comeback, uh, on platforms like Twitter, et cetera, um, uh, or Instagram, Pinterest, anywhere, uh, you really should be using all the affiliate links you can get get yourself into to uh, to post the stuff. I, uh, in terms of the universal book links, one of the things I would do is every time you post anything that's related to a book, I would have a universal book link for that. Um, you could do the same thing with on on sites like Amazon and other and elsewhere. You can actually get affiliate links through them for certain uh, like films and products and things like that. Uh, one of the things you have to be careful for is um, making sure that, I think there are some restrictions on where those links can appear. Uh, I think that there are rules against using affiliate links in emails, uh, I believe. Um, universal book links we've found, uh, this I think still holds true uh, because they are essentially embedded on a site that your visitors uh, go to first uh, it, it, and you can claim some ownership for, um, I think that they are within the terms of service for, uh, sites like Amazon. Uh, they, I don't think we're breaking, I, well, I don't, is, we have not been found to be breaking any rules on that. Uh, I've seen some things pop up about that in like authors groups or whatever, but in, so far as we can tell, I mean, we have a pretty strong relationship with Amazon. Uh, hmm. that hasn't been the case. So, um, I would I would be uh, you know careful about using the Amazon links directly in emails and that sort of thing. But I, so far as it, I use the Universal Book links in all my emails, I haven't seen any problems come from that yet. So. Yeah, I haven't seen that either, and I think it's because we're taking people <clears throat> to a, a landing page that is not a direct link to anywhere, mm -hmm. and people decide where they go from there. Uh, I yeah. think that that kind of prevents the uh, whatever. I, I don't know why, but it, it hasn't seemed to have been an issue, at least in my own experience and, and, and the way I use it. Yeah. Uh, apparently I posted the wrong, I posted a YouTube link. It didn't copy the bit.ly link. Sorry about that guys. But Alyssa of course is watching and has corrected the record and fixed everything. Yeah, so so. Alyssa. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know how we do anything uh, when we don't have Alyssa on our side. So never make her angry. Um, okay. So let's see. I got, I've, we've had a couple of po comments. Craig is posting a lot of questions and comments. I want to make sure everyone has a fair shake at getting things answered. Uh, 
But well, we'll many see. of them I see Alyssa has already wrote of them. They'll probably come back to me so I can build them into tickets to things we need to improve and update on books to read. Some of that has come your <laughs> yeah. way. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, this one. Okay. So we, we actually do have pay hip support, I believe, and the Universal Book Links. Isn't that correct? Mark? Yeah, except right now pay hip is only for ebooks. We don't have a way to split it out uh, for audio because we can't yeah. have audio. So if you're selling direct audio or print, which is coming, it's yeah. kind of like in the top level of the queues of things that need to get added to books to read once we get through our uh, prints, uh, all of the work we're doing to make print so much better. Yeah. Uh, coming news come on that coming soon, not today. Yeah. Very but, exciting. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but that'll be there. And then with that, Craig, I do know we have it in the queue to figure out how do we differentiate pay hip audio, pay hip ebook, and then obviously yeah. if you have direct sales, uh, pay hip, et cetera. Now, uh, so did, yeah, didn't question. we add some audiobook support to the Universal Book? Yeah, book? it's manuals. Uh, yeah. So it's not automatic. Like with ebooks, you press a refresh button and we send some crawlers out and we go get the links for you. With audio, it's manual support. So you can you have to go in and add your audio links but but that's how we're gonna that's how we're gonna have print is like because and here's the challenge with print you go to a place like amazon and you get all kinds of used books listed and then you get uh even some one of my latest books i was looking at it on the uk site and it's like oh my god why is this book 69 dollars it's supposed to be 19 dollars yeah. what's going on it's because because of the way a lot of affiliate programs and, and anyone can kind of sell anything there they can buy it from the same source and then upcharge it so what yeah. you want in control of is I no 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 I want the link that's the actual real link which is you know my book or the publisher's book or whatever not some used bookstore or or some scammer uh, yeah. gaming Amazon so so it will be uh, manual but at least it puts the control in your hands as an author which I yeah. love yeah uh, so Tammy asks uh, would love to see in addition to books to read WooCommerce uh, yeah. support or a blank link spot these are things that we are uh, trying to figure out internally. Yeah. Um, it, it always seems like it's the easiest thing, uh, you know, just add support. Um, and in some cases it is, but, uh, in certain cases there are some like legal challenges, other ta challenges right. that we have to overcome before we can just add that. Um, we want to prevent people from using the service for scamming others, uh, for example, yeah, serious so, purposes. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> we have to figure out ways to, uh, you know, to make sure that yeah, like we don't know because it's automated. We don't know that Tammy is pure of heart and her links are, are beautiful links that are going to send. We, to we do know that, but we some, know other, that Tammy uh, some other person might have a link to some, uh, you know, some weird, uh, virus that's yeah. going to download into your computer. Right. So we, yeah. we don't know that. So that's what we have to check. Yeah. Uh, with the storefronts, it's e it's easy. We know uh, because we have relationships with these stores. For one thing, that when you know, when we're scanning that, we can find that it is a book. It is for sale. Uh, it's not just someone posing as a book and scamming people out of their money, etc. But um, let's see. Uh, this is a question about print, um, which we may we can kind of answer. Uh, so I publish my print books via Ingram. Will it help for me to publish print via D2D? Do you distribute channels other than uh, IG? Ingram. Ingram, I'm guessing that's short I'm for guessing it. Ingram. Yeah. Yeah. It is so. this, it's pretty much going to be the same, right? Yeah. You're, you're going to get the same distribution you would get if you were publishing through Ingram. So you would just be duplicating your efforts just to yeah. let you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Okay. So we've had... Alyssa helped us out and answered the uh, blank link with a very appropriate statement, I think. The blank link input is ripe for abuse. Uh, and Tammy, I think, now agrees. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so D2D having your back is uh, has been a common theme lately, by the way. Uh, so, uh, And we we took a little bit of abuse over something recently, which we won't go into. But, uh, you know, I, I'm glad, I was very heartened to see that people get it. Uh, people get that w the rules that we have aren't arbitrary rules. We we do things because the uh, retailers have their rules, which we are, you know, sworn to uphold. Basically, uh, so there. It, it, it I know it. Sometimes it just seems like things just happen because they happen. But I promise you, what we do here is we look for every opportunity to protect the authors, make sure the authors are getting everything they're supposed to get get paid on time, aren't being ripped off in some way. So, uh, you know, we're, no rule is arbitrary. <laughs> so, um, so I, um, 
when it comes to the, t the so some of our well, we've covered pretty much everything I think uh, that DVD author offers so far. Uh, but one of the things that I did want to talk about, and it's it is sort of related, and I actually have a way in which this particular service slash tool could be used even if you aren't a publisher, and that is our uh, DVD payment splitting, um, which is a fairly new. Um, service that we've started offering and what and uh, it's kind of it's sort of piggybacking off of the technology we created to create DDD shared universes which had sort of a limited you couldn't just sign up for a DDD shared universe uh, this was the program that we created as a replacement for the uh, Kindle Amazon's Kindle worlds where an intellectual property holder uh, could allow like AG riddle for example had his whole Atlantis um, what was it? His Atlantis Gene um, universe opened up so that other writers could write within that universe and share revenue with the IP holder with AG Riddle. Um, so we had a program very similar to that, uh, and it's sort of manual, all manual. Not not the you know, it's not set up for people to just sign up and do. Um, but because of that and because of other things that we've talked about and offered and promised over the years, we were always inundated with people asking for ways to easily share revenue. Because some of the some of the ways in which that is being done by other companies, uh, we'll just say are not great. And they're not they're not very easy uh, to use, uh, for one thing. Uh, not trying to be disparaging here. I'm just saying this is the feedback we got. People were not happy with the methods by which they were being uh, uh, empowered to share revenue with other authors. Uh, for things like co-authoring a book, uh, box sets, um, you know, anthologies and things like that. So we created D2D payment splitting. Um, and what, what it does is allow uh, two or more creators or uh, there's an organizer, the person who organizes the split, and then there are the contributors. Uh, so you can have multiple contributors on a project and everybody can get a certain percentage of each um, sale um, after all the other, you know, the royalties, uh, all the other stuff comes out of it, not the royalties, but the uh, R cut, that sort of thing. Um, so th this has been a well received. People are very excited about this. Um, I was very excited about this and you can actually assign the various percentages. So it's not like everybody has to take the same percentage. So if the organizer, for example, uh, puts together a box set and they've taken on all the expense of cover design, editing, layout, you know, uh, advertising, all that stuff came out of their pocket, you could, uh, have the organizer receive a larger percentage of the cut than the other participating authors, um, Everybody gets to agree on their percentage. No one can change percentages unless both parties agree. So it's a very safe, easy way to do this. But one of the things that I think makes it very uh, powerful is it, we take care of all the taxes. Uh, and by that, I don't mean we're paying your taxes. Uh, <laughs> but I do mean that we we you go through the same tax interview as you as our authors go through when they set up their accounts. It's required. Uh, and so taxes are um, handled for you in terms of what you, you know, s reporting to your uh, your government uh, and that government's agency, uh, the amount that you would, uh, the amount based on what you got. I think I'm butchering this entire thing, but basically let's just put it this way. We made taxes a little easier for you. Uh, you don't, as, a, as the contributor, you don't have to figure out who gets what when it comes to taxes. Right. Um, in terms of like the forms that they get and, or any of that stuff, all that gets taken care of. That was probably the stickiest part of figuring this out. Um, but where I think this comes into our discussion today is you don't have to be an author on a project to receive income on that project. So let's say that you were a cover designer. Uh, you could offer to design a box set cover for free in exchange for a certain percentage of the sales of the book indefinitely. Yeah. Uh, or you could do layout. Um, maybe you are going, maybe you volunteer to handle the uh, marketing. Uh, everyone in the box set chips in 
for the uh, the actual cost of advertising, but you take care and manage all the ads and make sure you know you're doing the hard work behind the scenes of making sure that those ads are effective testing and all that. Uh, and in, in lieu of some sort of salary or upfront charge, uh, you uh, agree to take a percentage of the book. So that is a that is another side hustle kind of tool, uh, a creative way to use the DDD payment splitting. So. Sorry, yeah, Mark, and, I kind of went a long way on that and didn't let you contribute <laughs> at all. Go ahead and say what you're going to say. No, what I wanted to add to that is um, as a Canadian and, and Draft Digital's in the U.S., every time if I were to get paid from Draft to Digital and then have to figure out, okay, all the 16 people that I'm <laughs> collaborating with, everyone gets their percentage cut, then I got to translate it into all the different currencies, whether it's back to American, to Canadian, to pounds, to Australian dollars, whatever, I'm going to lose money every time I exchange back and forth. So I lose money on that. I lose a lot of labor. Yeah. D2D takes care of paying everyone directly. I get my money directly. Everyone gets their tax forms. Tax forms, very important for your local government that you actually have a tax form and D2D will send that for your American sales. That's really, really beneficial. So that's a huge, huge benefit. And one of the things I love is with print and, and, and uh, ebook, is you can differentiate those sales. So here's one of the frustrations uh, that I know happens. Is like, yay, I got 18 cents from Amazon Mexico. Mm -hmm. uh, I now have to divide that 18 ways. And so the cost for me to do the math to figure out the 18 ways, right. is, I mean, it's going to cost me more to figure out getting the money back and forth. Whereas I know that uh, I have, uh, I think, six or seven projects that are collaborative uh, projects through draft to digital and one of the benefits is, okay, so you know, if I made 18 cents off of Amazon uh, Mexico, and then I made actual real money off the US site and the UK site, and all the other places like Kobo in Canada and uh, other places like that, that yep. all of those things add up. And I don't need to do all that work repeatedly because the payments do come in, uh, you know, in, in multiple uh, stages. They're not all at the same time. Amazon, uh, Apple has their own a fiscal calendar that doesn't yeah. sync up with anything in this universe, but right. it's its own little thing. <laughs> and so all of these weird payments coming in, the authors get the money immediately. So if I'm in, in a lot of cases, I'm, I'm the publisher, but in, in a lot of those cases, uh, the author gets the money directly. I don't even have to worry about it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, right now, one of my frustrations is I have a, you know, hardcover through Ingram. So I got to wait till Ingram pays me and sends me the check or whatever deposits the money. Right. And then I have to figure out how to translate the money to another currency to get it to the author. Well, that there's that time delay yeah. uh, where I'm, you know, I'm sitting on the money that really should be uh, that author's money. So, I mean, it solves so many collaborative uh, problems in, in yeah. the industry. I don't think, I don't think people recognize just, just how beneficial a program like that can be. Yeah. And you can get really creative with it. Um, I, I shared a link in the comments uh, that is uh, interesting uses for DDD payment splitting. Uh, I don't have that one programmed into the little on-screen thing. So um, if you're watching this after the fact, just go to go to um, drafttodigital.com slash blog and just search for interesting uses for DDD payment splitting. Uh, that will find that post for you. Uh, and, and, and I did outline some of what we talked about here. This is from pretty cool stuff. Um, so I got a couple of comments here. I definitely want us to address. So let's see. There's one for, another one from Craig says, um, I've been thinking about creating a small, this is another way you can side hustle some cash. Uh, even if you're not the one publishing your books. Uh, but I've been thinking about creating a small publisher to help people publish their books for a while now, planning on trying this. So using DDD payment splitting, uh, books to read author pages, uh, books, uh, the universal book links, uh, using all these little tools we discussed here, you could totally build a virtual publishing yeah. house. Very I easily. know um, agents who've done this, yep. uh, where, where the agent says, I know this is a great book. I can't sell it to New York, but I know it can be good. And the agent wants to make their 15%. So the agent invests in publishing the book, yep. keeps 15% for themselves the rest goes to the author. And yep. then that way the agent and the author are making good money and then potentially getting the track record sales that the agent can go, hey, look at how many of this we sold. Do you want to buy the print rights? Yeah. Do you want to buy the foreign language rights? Yeah. Like I think literary agents could really leverage this tool because I know agents are sitting on thousands of books so that many, they yeah. know can sell, but they can't because they can only sell 10 of them. 
Yeah. Right. And because it, it, there's only what five publishers in the world now, as opposed to the thousands that used to exist. And I know uh, that there's a sort of taboo on uh, self-publishing when your goal is to get into the tr traditional publishing world. Um, but you, I could see agents using this as a way to test um, test the markets yeah. and uh, show publishers that this this author is some you know someone they could invest in. So. Yeah. Um, oh, with yeah, that being said, can I add to that? Yeah, they could also, if an agent really, really, really wants to hang on to North American rights because they really want to convince Penguin Random House to, to buy it in Canada and the U.S., mm -hmm. and they can use D2D and only publish it everywhere but Canada and the U.S. Right. So they haven't, you know, uh, ruined that market for themselves. Show right. that it's selling really, really well and then sell those rights. Because again, exactly. more tools we have is you've got different currencies you can play with and control, and you can control the territories you publish to. Yeah, that's a very good point. Uh, Tammy, uh, coming in on Facebook, says, uh, can you develop contributor A gets uh, X percent of royalty until X total? Um, no, not yet. But I think this is something that uh, would be very useful. So we can pass this along to our uh, to our team. Um, this And we've talked about way, you know, this is definitely not the end that we didn't just develop this and that's where it is and that's where it's going to stay. Uh, we're already, we've been looking at ways that we can improve uh, royalty splitting yeah. over time. Um, so yeah, you can look for some of these things in the future. Um, and I would recommend if you have a request like that, please email support at drafttodigital.com because it's only by knowing that there's a number of authors that want to use it that we can prioritize that. On the flip side, Tammy, is the, okay, so as a publisher, I've paid up front, like the advance on the book. I don't want to start paying the authors until I get my advance back. Therefore, yeah. after X amount is earned, then they start getting the royalty. That's the uh, a, a potential other thing I know that's in the queue of <laughs> enhancements to add. Yeah. Uh, Tammy, or, I'm sorry, uh, Lynn uh, was kind enough to post um, the link to the blog post that I shared in the and I know Lynn does yeah. collaborative uh, anthologies. Uh, she's a brilliant editor and has done some really amazing anthologies using using collaborative tools. Like I, that. I think we are only scratching the surface of ways you could use that payment splitting tool uh, to to really create some side revenue. Um, there's and, and of course you know you can publish your own work this way as well if you're collaborating with others. You know, there's nothing limiting you at all. So don't don't think this is only for people organizing these things. This is for you and uh, you know a writing partner. Uh, we've seen people share revenue with their uh, cover designers, share revenue with uh, illustrators, for example. So if you have a book that has illustrations, uh, so the two of you can split royalties there. Early readers um, that they really, really, really value highly. <laughs> yes. So that's an interesting idea. You could offer like. A little contest is, you know, it says, uh, you know, the first, you know, I don't know. I don't know what the terms of that might be. Maybe the first 10 people to show me uh, <laughs> one of my books on your bookshelf, I will include in the profits of this next book, you know, and you get 1% or something. Um, so, yeah, you, you can get really creative with this. Uh, there's there's no end to the ways that you could use that. So uh, people ask, I, I want to address this before it's too late, but people ask about um, splitting royalties with like charities and things like that. Uh, we don't have a tool to do it directly yet. Uh, so you couldn't say, I want X percent to go to, you know, the leuke Leukemia Society or, or uh, something along those lines. Uh, you couldn't do that just yet. However, if you can convince whoever it is you want to split with to sign up and get a draft to digital account, there's no charge or anything. Yeah. Uh, they can go and do their own tax interview and set everything up, uh, set up their bank accounts and everything, and then you can split with them. Um, and then yeah. they, they would handle all the all the uh, tax related stuff on their side. That you know the nonprofit stuff on their side once they got those payments, but. Um, it can be done. Uh, it's not it's not a clean way. It's a clunky kind of way, but uh, there are people who are already doing it. Yeah, so it's workable, right? It's, it is it's workable. a way you can use the system the, the way it was designed and and put the power back into your own hands. Yeah. Uh, okay. So we are we're about one minute from uh, wrapping up. Uh, there's a there's several questions here, and I don't I don't want I don't necessarily want to leave anything on the table, but some of these are, t we're never going to be able to answer in this amount of time. Um, uh, here, here's a question. Does 
PDF print book to EPUB for ebook retain footnotes and formatting and photos. So I'm I'm reading that as they have a PDF version of the book they're uploading, converting to EPUB, and they want to know if it return retains that stuff. And I don't think we can you in print you can upload a PDF and it would certainly keep all of your yeah. uh, footnotes and everything. Uh, we don't believe, I don't believe we convert PDF to ebook. No, we don't. So I don't think so. Um, but if you uploaded the word document with uh, footnotes and stuff, I think that we can handle that. So it does um, preserve those kinds of footnotes in the, yeah. uh, it embeds it as HTML links. Uh, in, uh, I've done it a couple of times. It's, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's tricky. It's not easy. So you have yeah. to really do your formatting consistently properly you can't yeah. do two different ways of footnotes they have to be consistent right. like endnotes for example otherwise right. it just it's it's really a horrible experience you might want to reach out uh when you're uploading something that contains footnotes and uh for photos and that sort of thing just reach out to our support team support at drafttodigital.com uh to say hey i just uploaded a book and it, it contains these things uh, do, is there anything special I need to do? And what what they'll do is uh, if there's a they'll review it, and if there's a problem, they can help you fix it. So that's that's not a bad idea. Um, okay, so I think we're out of time. Uh, so everybody who asked questions, I apologize that we couldn't get to everything. Um, so you know, stick around. I'm sure people in will be in the comments answering some questions uh, as we can. Uh, but that's going to wrap us up for for this go round. And I, I think this went very well, Mark. I appreciate you jumping in. I know it was kind of last minute, uh, but I had a good time. And I think we covered some great ground here. Yeah, some good questions from uh, from folks. And uh, thank you guys so much. Any questions you do have, don't forget email support at DraftedDigital.com. Exactly. Really, really smart people we work with are going to answer your questions. That's right. So that said, uh, make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube and on Facebook. If you go to youtube.com slash draft digital and facebook.com slash slash draft to digital, he said, um, you can follow and like and subscribe, hit little bells, do all the things. Uh, make sure you are bookmarking d 2 livecom because that's where we do a countdown for every live episode that we do. Um, we try to do at least one a month and we typically will do more than that. So that's where you can find out what's coming up and get links to it on both YouTube and uh, Facebook. And uh, make sure you are tuning in, especially bookmark this URL because there's something magical that will happen eventually, I promise you, at selfpublishinginsiders.com. Uh, that's where th that's going to be the virtual home of the podcast, Self Publishing Insiders. So uh, make sure you're checking that out as well. Wherever fine podcasts are sold, uh, go and uh, tune in to the Self-Publishing Insiders with draft to digital uh, That is um, rebroadcasts of this live stream. Uh, you get some great interviews we did over the summer. We interviewed a, an influencer in this industry every single day for about three months. So uh, there's a lot of wisdom there. So go check that out. But uh, that's going to do it. Mark, thank you again for joining me. Everyone else, thank you for tuning in and we'll see you all next time. Take care.